South Korean government source revealed on Wednesday that Ri Young-gil, the North's chief of general staff to the People's Army, had been executed earlier this month under charges of corruption and pursuit of personal gains. North Korean generals are adorned with an abundance of medals, making them look like walking trophy cases. It's quite fascinating, considering the country hasn't been involved in major warfare for over six decades, sparking curiosity and shock. Where do these awards come from, and why are they given out so generously? Join us as we explore how North Korean generals earn and collect lots of medals, even with 60 years of no terrifying war involved. Number 1. From Soviet Influence to National Identity The tale starts with how the Soviet Union greatly influenced North Korea, especially in its early years after being freed from Japanese rule. Many Koreans, including Kim Il-sung, the future leader of North Korea, found sanctuary in the Soviet Union. Kim Il-sung not only found safety there, but also joined the military, rising to lead a battalion during World War II, in the Soviet Union, achievements, both in military and civilian realms, were celebrated with medals and honors, leaving a deep mark on Kim Il-sung. His time in the USSR taught him the importance of recognition, not just as a token of gratitude, but as a powerful tool for motivation and allegiance. He admired how these decorations represented dedication to the state, a concept he found captivating. This admiration influenced his vision for North Korea's system of honors. After the Korean War, North Korea sought to establish its identity and independence, including creating its award system. Inspired by the Soviet model, North Korea designed a range of decorations to honor various achievements, not just on the battlefield but also in labor, education, and culture. This system wasn't just copying the Soviets, but adapting their principles to fit North Korea's unique context. The leadership understood the potential of awards in fostering a united and motivated society, where every citizen felt connected to the nation's story through personal achievements. These awards also reinforced loyalty to Kim Il-sung's leadership and the state. As time passed, North Korea's award system expanded, covering a wide array of accomplishments, from military valor to contributions to science, industry, and culture. The distinction between military and civilian achievements blurred, creating a societal structure where medals symbolized honor and loyalty across all sectors. This setup mirrors the country's strong emphasis on its military, which holds a significant role not only in protecting the nation, but also in governing and daily life. However, it's not just the soldiers or those with military prowess who receive recognition through these symbols of honor. In North Korea, a blend of bravery and productivity is celebrated through medals. They commend a wide range of achievements, from exceptional military service to outstanding contributions in labor and civilian areas. The country's societal structure is deeply influenced by its military, with its presence felt in many aspects of civilian life. This extensive military culture isn't just about being prepared for defense or combat. It serves as a means for national unity and collective identity. The government utilizes this militarization to instill discipline, patriotism, and a sense of duty toward building the nation. Consequently, the award system becomes crucial in reinforcing these values, acknowledging and rewarding contributions that align with the state's objectives and ideology. The military first policy has molded a unique cultural landscape where achievements, regardless of their nature, are celebrated as acts of service and loyalty to the nation. This has blurred the lines between military and civilian honors, creating a comprehensive system that acknowledges a broad spectrum of contributions to the state. In an interesting twist, North Korean medals aren't just limited to acts of military bravery. Many decorations honor accomplishments in areas that might seem unrelated to the military realm. For example, there are medals awarded for excellence in fishing, a crucial activity for food security and economic sustainability. These awards highlight the importance of collective efforts in achieving national goals, turning everyday tasks into acts of patriotism. Similarly, Contributions to infrastructure development, 
such as building power plants and dams, or advancements in agriculture, are also recognized and honored. These projects play a vital role in the country's self-sufficiency and development, reflecting the leadership's focus on industrial and agricultural progress. Number 2. Uniting Society and Ideology By awarding medals for various achievements, the state not only recognizes individual and collective efforts, but also encourages ongoing commitment to national progress. This goes beyond just saying good job. It's a powerful way to bring people together and keep them motivated. It sends a clear message that everyone has a part to play in shaping the country's future. This approach blurs the lines between military service and civilian contributions, showing that both are valued equally. It's part of a broader strategy where the state's focus on the military is spread across all parts of society. What's interesting is how even seemingly ordinary tasks like farming or mining are honored with medals. These honors show the state's dedication to recognizing all kinds of contributions. For example, medals are given for excellence in coal mining or growing crops, things that are essential for the country's energy and food supply. By doing this, North Korea raises these tasks to national importance, giving them the same respect as traditional military achievements. This culture of giving out lots of awards in North Korea isn't just a tradition, it's deeply ingrained in the society and how it's governed. It's not just about recognizing military and labor achievements, it serves broader social and psychological purposes too. It helps create a strong national identity and unity, setting North Korea's military traditions apart from other countries. At the heart of this extensive award system are complex psychological motivations. These medals are more than just pieces of metal. They're symbols of the state's appreciation, which is important in a society where individual success often takes a back seat to collective goals. This recognition satisfies a basic human need for acknowledgement and respect, strengthening people's commitment to the state's objectives. Furthermore, the abundance of medals plays a crucial role in bringing society together by creating a visible order of achievement that spans both military and civilian sectors. The state fosters a sense of belonging and identity among its citizens through this structured system. This order also fuels a competitive spirit, pushing individuals to contribute more vigorously to national development in the hopes of receiving recognition. Moreover, this culture of awards serves as a powerful tool for ideological indoctrination. Each medal, tied to specific achievements aligned with state values, serves as a constant reminder of the ideological purity expected from every citizen. This system of rewards thus becomes a means of controlling and directing societal norms and behaviors, ensuring that every action contributes to the continuity of the state's ideology. When compared to military traditions in other countries, North Korea's approach to awards stands out for its volume and variety. In many countries, military decorations are typically reserved for acts of valor, bravery, and exceptional service in combat situations making them highly coveted symbols of honor and sacrifice. For example, the United States and many European nations have structured systems of military honors that distinguish between different levels of achievement, with the highest decorations being rare and often awarded after death. In contrast, North Korea's system emphasizes not only military prowess, but also achievements in labor, education, and other civilian areas. This broad range of recognition is unique and reflects the country's militarized society, where the distinction between civilian and military contributions is less pronounced. Additionally, while in most countries, military and civilian honors are distinct and separate, North Korea's approach blends them, highlighting the holistic contribution to national development. Furthermore, the mass awarding of medals in North Korea serves a different societal function than in other countries. While elsewhere, medals might highlight individual heroism or exceptional contributions, in North Korea, they also aim to unify the populace under a common goal and ideology. This reflects a distinct cultural perspective on the role of the individual versus the collective, 
where personal achievements are celebrated as contributions to the collective strength and prosperity of the nation. Additionally, the way North Korea's award system carries across generations within families is quite unique. This means that honors are passed down or shared within families. This not only emphasizes the significance of family legacy in serving the state, but also binds multiple generations to the ideology and goals of the nation. It creates a continuous line of loyalty and service to the country. North Korea's award system, deeply rooted in both military and civilian achievements, is influenced by a distinctive and somewhat controversial policy known as the rules of three generations. Number three, the legacy of loyalty. This rule, governing both the distribution of honors and the application of punitive measures, reflects the nation's approach to governance, loyalty, and social control. Understanding this policy gives us insight into the complex interaction between honor, punishment, and legacy in North Korean society. The rules of three generations policy is based on the principle that the actions of an individual can affect their family across three generations, parents, children, and grandchildren. While this policy has historical roots in Confucian values, which emphasize family loyalty and collective responsibility, it has been adopted in North Korea as a means of both rewarding loyalty and enforcing discipline within its population. Historically, this policy was put in place to ensure absolute loyalty to the regime and to deter acts of dissent or defection by holding the entire family accountable for the actions of its members. The aim is to create a self-regulating society where familial ties enforce state ideology and compliance. This approach relies on deep-seated familial loyalties and the fear of collective punishment to maintain order and allegiance to the state. The rules of three generations policy has a dual nature, impacting North Koreans in both positive and negative ways. On one hand, it allows for the recognition of achievements to extend beyond the individual, celebrating the family's collective contribution to the state. This aspect reinforces the importance of family legacy in serving the state, encouraging generations of loyalty and dedication to the nation's goals. Families of decorated heroes not only enjoy societal reputation, but also tangible benefits, such as improved living conditions, education, and job opportunities. On the other hand, the policy's punitive measures are severe. If an individual is found guilty of a crime against the state, the consequences extend to their entire family, affecting three generations. This can lead to imprisonment, forced labor, or other severe penalties not only for the individual, but also for their parents, children, and even grandchildren. This collective punishment aims to prevent opposition by using the natural human instinct to protect one's family from harm. The impact of this policy on the awarding of medals and honors is significant. It means that an individual's achievements and failures are not theirs alone, but are shared by their family. This shared responsibility for one's actions creates a strong incentive for conformity and loyalty, but also a deep sense of vulnerability. Knowing that one's actions could affect their family for generations influences both personal behavior and the collective psyche of the nation. Furthermore, this policy has shaped the social structure of North Korean society, creating a system similar to a caste system. In this system, One's family background can determine their fate. Those from families with a history of loyalty and service to the state are more likely to receive prestigious awards and honors, forming a cycle of privilege. Conversely, families perceived as disloyal or defiant not only face social stigma but also encounter barriers to receiving state recognition or advancement. In modern North Korea, the tradition of awarding military and civilian decorations continues to be a significant aspect of the state's cultural and political landscape. Under the leadership of Kim Jong-un, there have been some changes in the application and significance of these awards, reflecting both continuity with established practices and potential shifts in the state's approach to honor and recognition. Examining the current practices in awarding military decorations and the potential changes under Kim Jong-un's leadership provides insight into the evolving dynamics of North Korean society and governance.
the practice of awarding military and civilian decorations remains robust, with medals serving as a key mechanism for recognizing loyalty, achievement, and dedication to the state's ideals. The criteria for receiving these honors continue to encompass a wide range of contributions, from military prowess and heroism to achievements in labor, science, and culture. This broad spectrum of recognition underscores the state's comprehensive view of service and contribution to national development. Military decorations, in particular, are awarded with great ceremony and are highly publicized events designed to emphasize the importance of the military in North Korean society. These events serve as opportunities for state information, reinforcing the narrative of a strong, resilient, and heroic nation. High-profile awards are often personally given by Kim Jong-un, emphasizing the connection between the military and the leadership and reinforcing the leader's role as the ultimate source of honor and authority. Since taking power, Kim Jong-un has shown a keen understanding of the symbolic importance of medals and awards. While there's a clear continuation of past practices, there are hints of potential changes in how these honors are utilized and what they represent. One area where we might see a shift is in the increased focus on technological and scientific achievements. North Korea is working to advance its technological capabilities, especially in fields like nuclear development and information technology. As a result, there has been a noticeable increase in awards recognizing contributions to these areas. This change reflects the regime's broader strategic goal of presenting North Korea as a modern and technologically advanced nation. Additionally, under Kim Jong-un's leadership, there's been a subtle but significant emphasis on youth and innovation. Young scientists, engineers, and workers are increasingly being honored with high awards, indicating a deliberate effort to cultivate a new generation of loyal, motivated, and skilled individuals who can contribute to the state's development goals. This focus on youth also helps rejuvenate the state's image and ensures the continuity of the regime's values among the younger generation. Another aspect of potential change is the role of international engagement and diplomacy in awarding decorations. As North Korea navigates its complex relationships with allies and adversaries, there have been instances where awards are used to signify diplomatic achievements or to honor foreign individuals who contribute to the state's international goals. This use of decorations as a diplomatic tool shows a refined understanding of their power in international relations. However, it's important to note that any changes in the practice of awarding decorations in North Korea are gradual and deeply rooted in the state's overarching goals of maintaining control, ensuring loyalty, and projecting strength. The fundamental principles of the award system, such as recognition of service to the state, the merging of military and civilian achievements, and the promotion of a unified national identity remain unchanged. North Korea often remains mysterious and controversial on the global stage. It utilizes its system of awards and honors as a tool for shaping international perceptions. By showcasing its achievements through state media, particularly those related to military advancements and technological progress, North Korea aims to project an image of strength, resilience, and self-reliance. Number four, balancing diplomacy and publicity. The awarding of medals to scientists and military personnel for their achievements in nuclear technology or satellite launches sends a clear message to the international community. Highlighting North Korea's capabilities and its position as a significant player on the global stage. This strategic use of awards not only aims to garner respect and deterrence, but also aims to challenge the perception of North Korea as an isolated and backward country. Through carefully planned ceremonies and media coverage, the regime endeavors to present a narrative of progress and success, appealing to a sense of national pride and legitimacy among the global audience. Internally, the award system serves as a vital component of North Korea's propaganda machinery, reinforcing loyalty to the Kim dynasty and the government's ideologies. Public celebrations of award recipients work to foster a collective identity among North Koreans, closely linked to the state's achievements and the benevolence of its leadership. 
This system reinforces the image of the government as the protector and benefactor of the nation, ensuring its survival and prosperity amidst external threats and challenges. Additionally, the awards serve as a means of social control, motivating behaviors and activities that align with the state's goals. By glorifying individuals who significantly contribute to national development or defense, the government sets standards for citizenship and loyalty, subtly guiding the populace toward desired norms and values. This aspect of the award system is crucial for maintaining order and unity within North Korea's highly regimented society. Overall, North Korea's award system plays a vital role in balancing the regime's international and internal objectives. Externally, it seeks to reshape global perceptions and assert sovereignty and power, while internally, it reinforces the government's propaganda and promotes a unified national identity centered around loyalty to the leadership. This dual function demonstrates the advanced use of state honors as tools for both diplomacy and domestic governance. North Korea faces a challenge in balancing its external image of strength and progress with its internal narrative of unity and loyalty. This balance is crucial for the country's broader political and social strategy, highlighting the significant role of its award system. North Korean medals aren't just symbols of recognition. They're carefully designed to represent the state's ideology and glorify its history and leaders. Each medal tells a story of struggle, victory, and the values upheld by the North Korean government. The imagery on these medals often references the Workers' Party of Korea, the Juki ideology, and the country's revolutionary past, imbuing each award with deep ideological significance. Every aspect of these medals, from their colors to the symbols and inscriptions, is meticulously chosen to reinforce narratives of self-reliance, military strength, and the leadership's guidance. Medals featuring the likeness of Kim Il-sung or Kim Jong-il serve not only as personal honors, but also as reminders of the leader's eternal status in North Korea's pantheon of heroes. The history of North Korea, marked by its struggles against foreign aggression and the ongoing pursuit of power and development, is vividly reflected in the medals awarded to its citizens. Commemorative medals for specific battles or campaigns serve as tangible connections to the past, honoring the sacrifices made by the people in challenging times. These awards go beyond recognizing individual heroism. They serve as collective memorials, fostering a sense of continuity and resilience across generations. In addition, medals recognizing labor achievements often depict images related to agriculture, industry, and scientific progress. These symbols represent the country's journey towards self-sufficiency and technological advancement. This design aspect strengthens the state's narrative of overcoming economic challenges through hard work and innovation under the leadership of the ruling party. The visual design of North Korean medals plays a crucial role in promoting state ideology. The beauty and complexity of these decorations serve not only to celebrate achievements, but also to convey messages of strength, unity, and the esteemed status of the recipients within society. When displayed on military uniforms, these medals visually represent the state's military prowess and the bravery of its armed forces. Moreover, the practice of wearing multiple medals, often covering the entire front of a uniform, creates a striking visual display that highlights the collective nature of achievements in North Korean society. This abundance of decorations reinforces the idea that success and honor stem from collective effort and loyalty to the state and its leaders and has a long and rich history. In a parallel universe, the Korean peninsula had enjoyed six decades of unprecedented peace. This era was not only due to Korea's diplomacy, but also due to the unwavering dedication and bravery of the Korean generals who safeguarded their nation against all odds. And the stories behind their countless medals have remained shrouded in mystery for long. General Kang min Su was one such decorated hero. His office, adorned with trophies and commendations, concealed the grim truth of his past. Kang's rise to prominence began during the darkest days of the Cold War. In the midst of a tense standoff between North and South Korea, 
Kang orchestrated a covert operation that prevented a nuclear catastrophe. He infiltrated enemy lines, risking his life to dismantle a network of rogue scientists intent on launching a devastating missile strike. The operation was a success, but Kang emerged scarred, haunted by the horrors he witnessed. What are your thoughts on Kang's legacy? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 5. A Legacy of Honor The first prestigious recognition established in North Korea was the Order of the National Flag, introduced on October 12, 1948. It is divided into three classes, first class, entirely made of gold, second class, partially gold and partially silver, and third class, made of silver. During the Korean War, this order was awarded to numerous soldiers from both the Korean People's Army and the Chinese People's Volunteer Army. Later, on October 16, 1948, the Korea Liberation Medal was introduced. This medal, made of silver, proudly displayed the colors of the new national flag on its ribbon. It depicted an image of the Liberation Tower in Pyongyang, which was built to honor the freeing of Korea from Japanese control in 1945. The medal itself bore the word Hebang, or Liberation. By the summer of 1949, two more medals were added to the list. One of them was the Medal of Military Merit, intended to honor soldiers for their exceptional conduct or outstanding service during combat. Its ribbon, in red, white, and blue, held a medal showing a Korean People's Army soldier against the backdrop of the national flag. During the Korean War, this medal was awarded to over half a million KPA soldiers and nearly as many Chinese soldiers. Another addition was the Meritorious Service Medal, depicting a red star above a golden laurel wreath set against a ribbon of red, white, and blue. This medal was given to distinguished individuals in various fields like labor, arts, sciences, and socialist construction. In 1950, the prestigious Hero of the Republic title was introduced, followed by the Hero of Labor title the next year. After the armistice was signed in 1953, a new medal was created, the Commemorative Medal for the Victorious Fatherland Liberation War, awarded to all service personnel who participated in the Korean War. In 1973, the Order and Medal of Military Service Honor was established. Unlike previous honors mainly given during the Korean War, this medal recognized lower-ranking soldiers for their distinguished service in the Korean People's Army. Its ribbon, in red, yellow, and green, held a silver medal depicting the three branches of the Korean People's Army, the ground force, the navy, and the air force. The order, on the other hand, was divided into three classes, awarded to higher-ranking members of the armed forces. In 1983, the foundation of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Commemoration Medal was instituted to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the Republic's establishment in 1948. It was given to the laborers who continue the proud traditions of the anti-Japanese war, support our party's ideas and policies, and selflessly dedicate themselves to building North Korea. They make significant contributions to the nation's prosperity and spread ideology throughout society. The medal, placed on a ribbon resembling the national flag, features the national emblem in gold atop a red star with gold detailing. The Victorious Fatherland Liberation War Commemoration Medal was awarded to active and reserve military personnel who fought in the Korean War. Established in 1985 to honor the conflict and its veterans, the medal displays a red ribbon and depicts a bugler from the Korean People's Army on a red background. In 1998, another commemorative honor was created to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Republic. This honor was bestowed upon individuals serving the state, party, or armed forces for their exceptional contributions. The order, predominantly gold, features the national emblem within a five-point star surrounded by laurel leaves with the national flag depicted behind the star. While the medals and honors mentioned may be the most well-known since 1948, there's a host of lesser-known yet fascinating decorations that have been awarded throughout North Korea's history. Number 6. Honors Through the Ages During the Korean War, the Admiral the Sunshine Order of Merit was established, 
honoring officers of the Korean People's Army Naval Forces for their outstanding service and achievements that inflicted significant losses upon the enemy. This order pays tribute to Admiral Yi Sun Sin, a respected admiral from the Chosun era known for his victories against the Japanese during the Imjin War. In 1975, all members of the Chongyong organization became eligible to receive a special medal to commemorate the occasion. This medal, called the Kenyan Medal Chongyong, was adorned with a ribbon in the colors of the DPRK's national flag. The medal itself was made of silver and featured an intricate wreath pattern on its outer edges. In 1986, the Order of the Red Banner of the Three Revolutions was introduced. This order recognizes individuals for their exceptional contributions in the fields of ideology, technology, and culture. Its design features a winged horse. Established in 1992, the Commemorative Order of Capital Reconstruction was given to those who participated in rebuilding Pyongyang after the Korean War. This order recognizes their efforts in transforming the city into a modern cultural hub under the leadership of the party. The Order of War Service Industry is awarded at intervals of 10, 20, and 30 years to military engineers for their dedicated service in the Engineering Corps. Meanwhile, the Order of Korean Labor depicts a gold star with a hammer and sickle atop a red flag with labor written on it, honoring those for their distinguished labor. In 2005, another significant medal was introduced, marking the 50th anniversary of the Chongyong organization. Unlike the previous medal, this one had a golden color and depicted the Chongyong headquarters in Tokyo on its front side. The years 1955 and 2005 were inscribed on either side of the building, symbolizing the organization's five decades of existence. Above the building, the Korean national flag was depicted, while 50th anniversary was written beneath it. The Medal for Agricultural Merit celebrates outstanding contributions to agriculture, featuring an image of a tractor. The Order of Railway Service Honor is bestowed upon individuals for distinguished service within the Korean State Railway, depicted with the railway logo on a golden star. The Order of Colliery Service Honor acknowledges mine workers for their long service or meritorious work and productivity. The medal features a Korean mine worker on a red star with industrial imagery. In 2013, on the 60th anniversary of the victorious Fatherland Liberation War, the commemoration order was established. This honor, presented to all Korean War veterans, showcases a golden five-point star with the victory statue from Pyongyang's Korean War Memorial at its center, surrounded by laurel leaves. Lastly, the creation of the Pektusan Youth Power Station Medal, introduced in 2016, commemorates the building of the power station, with the medal showing the dam hanging from a blue and white ribbon. The most esteemed honors in North Korea remain the Order of Kim Il-sung and the Order of Kim Jong-il, established in 1972 and 2012, respectively. These awards recognize significant efforts toward the revolutionary cause and the development of a socialist Korean nation. They can be given to individuals as well as organizations. For instance, the Mansur Day Art Troupe received the Order of Kim Il-sung in 1972, and the Manjong Day Revolutionary School received the Order of Kim Jong-il in October 2012. Initially introduced in 1948, the Order of the National Flag held the highest status in the country until 1972. These decorations and titles represent some of the most esteemed recognitions in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Despite the introduction of various other medals and honors since 1948, continuing up to the present day, what are your thoughts on the medals given to North Korean generals? Let us know your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.